What's going on everybody? Welcome back. We're here at the beautiful Sipapu Ski Resort here in New Mexico. I'm really lucky to be able to shoot videos and photos for this beautiful ski resort every single here year. So I get to come here quite a bit. It's one of my favorite places. It's a tiny mountain, but it's so much fun. And it really is a beautiful day, but I have some really, really not beautiful news. We brought the H2 up here. This is the first trip that we've taken it on since that last video where we fixed the leaks and we did all of the undercoating and everything. The truck drove beautifully, but now it's not moving. It's not going anywhere. It is absolutely and totally stuck. Check this out. We have the dreaded service four wheel drive error. And so that message isn't actually that uncommon. Some people say that it even comes on every month or so if you're not cycling through as a precaution. I do cycle through my four wheel drive modes regularly since I got the truck because I knew this could be a problem, but the truck will not move. If you put it into drive, it's like the e-brakes up or maybe it's stuck in four low, but it does not wanna go at all. And so I researched all night long and I was really thinking we were going to have to replace the encoder that's on the transmission. It's about a $200 part that actually switches it into the four high and four low and all your four wheel drive modes. And it's something we could do out here in the snow in the parking lot. And I was not too concerned because up the street in Taos about 15 miles, they do have one at the O'Reilly's, but I'm gonna show you what we found. All right, so let's pop the hood on this thing and I'll show y'all. This is really made for two people. All right, so here's that beautiful six liter Vortec. One of the best things about this engine is really even out here in the middle of nowhere. You can pretty much find parts for it. But if we look in the fuse box right here, that is a 40 amp fuse for the ignition. It's what the truck needs to turn itself on and off. And it blew and we're thinking it blew because the aftermarket radio apparently is wired directly to the ignition. And the service four wheel drive message popped up as soon as we discovered that fuse was blown. And so it couldn't have been a coincidence. I was absolutely certain that it had to be something to do with that fuse. So I had Brandon get a screwdriver, jump those terminals and hold them to the terminals after we started the truck and boom, the four wheel drive message is gone and everything is working. So I am waiting on a buddy of mine that works here to go in a house and bring me some of these 40 amp fuses. Hopefully that fixes the problem and we can be on our way tomorrow. But while we're waiting, I figured, why don't we get on the mountain and snowboard for a little bit while we're waiting on those parts to get here. Hopefully that fixes the whole problem, but we are here. This is a beautiful day. So let's go get some riding in. So I'm up here this weekend with Brandon, as usual, he's always with me. I know y'all guys think that he's just like my mechanic that I just make do all of my work, but he also hangs out with me like a regular human being. And then Ben, if you look far back to like a video from like years ago, we uh, built a little snowboard park in Lubbock and it was really cool. Ben helped me with that. Ben's been my friend for about 15 years and he used to snowboard with me a whole bunch and he finally got to come back on this trip. And so, yeah, like I said, this is the beautiful Sipapu Ski Resort here in New Mexico. I get to come shoot photos and videos for them every single season. And it's a really small resort, but if you're just beginning, it's a great place to learn. Or if you're a seasoned rider, my buddy Isa that maintains the parks, he does a really, really good job with some of the terrain parks. And it's also super affordable to stay. It's also super affordable for ski tickets. And so overall, it's just a really good spot. And it's only about five hours from Lubbock where we're all out of. And so it's the closest place that we can come and ride. So I'm here probably like a week or two out of the year. And so we're just gonna ride up to the top of the mountain and we're gonna get a few tricks. I hope your expectations are not high. None of us are any good, but it's a lot of fun and we enjoy riding. And so while we're waiting on those parts for the Hummer to get here, really thankful to my buddy, Greg. He's one of the- <laughs> All season. So I do wanna shout out my buddy, Greg. He's one of the maintenance guys here at Sipapu. He really, really works his butt off to make sure that this place, everything works. He's gonna go into town to Taos, get us those fuses and bring them back. Hopefully that fixes our problem. If not, I guess we're just, you know, stuck here. In a horrible, horrible place to be stuck, right? Terrible. <laughs> the worst oh, place no. in the world to be stuck. What do we do? <laughs> what will we ever do with our season passes? And 
I believe I can follow you. That'd be fine. All right. Like as fast as I go? Yeah. Let's go. I'll, I'll keep it a little slower. But... All right. down and I wasn't expecting it and it dug my edge in. Just go! <laughs> oh! Give me that thing, gotta clean the lens off. A little better. You all right? Uh -uh. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, crack the bad knee. <laughs> okay, so I'm really sorry to disappoint all of you. I know you were expecting some high tier X Games level of riding. And honestly, I, I've been riding better than ever the last few days. I had lots of cool tricks and stuff lined out that I was gonna do just to kind of fill in this time in between the Hummer being broken and us getting it fixed. But in that last clip, I threw that little tiny 360 off of that little knuckle and I just landed and I crunched, crunched my knee. So probably about 15 years ago, maybe a little bit longer, I was skating, doing a skate contest and I tore my ACL really bad. It it was all messed up. The doctor said I'd probably never run or skate again. And after about six months of just kind of taking it easy and some slow rehab, I started riding again. And it's always been super, super weak, but it's felt great the last couple days. But something about the way I landed on that last one, it just crunched like you're crushing a bag of cereal or something. And so just riding up that's pole lift, it hurts really, really bad. I actually thought I could try it again and I just keep taking a knee to the ground. I just keep falling over, it hurts so bad. So I guess that's it for, <laughs> for the snowboard portion of this video. All right, so it's the next day and my friends came through with a whole bunch of fuses. And so I'm pretty sure this is gonna fix the problem. Let's throw these into the truck and see what it does. All right, latch number one. Like I said, this is seriously meant for two people. Latch number two. Ah. All right, let's throw these in. All right, so we have a brand new 40 amp for the ignition, and we also have a brand new 40 amp for the blower motor because we accidentally broke that one. Pulling it off, really hope this works. I'm pretty sure it's going to. All right, blower motor's working. Come on. Yes! All right. So the truck is on but can we actually drive? Everything's looking good. We don't have any air or dash lights. So I'm gonna see if we can go into four high. Making a noise. All right, we're in four high. Let's go back into just four. Everything seems good. Let's go into drive. All right, moment of truth, right? E-brake. Oh, oh, hey, it seems happy. Yes, that's... All that it was, was the little fuse. I almost feel stupid even for making this video since it was just this one little fuse. Uh, very excited that it was only a fuse and I did not have to change out that encoder while 
while I was in the middle of the snow. Um, seems like the last couple videos have been about problems in the snow. I'm definitely ready for summertime to get here. <laughs> At least if something breaks down, I can be on nice dry pavement during the summertime. Hopefully in the next video or two, I should have an update on the Lotus interior. We have all of the material ordered. We're doing a really cool hexagon CNC stitched pattern for the top of the dash. We're doing some leather and some red Alcantara. It's a little bit different than the style that I usually go for. It's a little less conservative than my usual style. We did so much work to the interior that I thought it would be a really good opportunity to do something a little out of the box. If I hate it, we'll redo it, but hopefully it's something I like. I did a couple renderings and things, so I think I'm going to like it. But I guess that's the end of this video, and we'll see you next time.